On September 12th, 2022, news started to spread that Hezbollah had finally, finally signed a deal with the UFC. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. But unfortunately, according to these reports, he will not be fighting. Instead, he'll be a ringside guest, promoter, social media influencer. <laughs> Details remain murky, sketchy, and as it turns out, all of them refer back to a single post from freelance MMA journalist slash influencer Igor Lazarin. In his post breaking the news of the deal, he stated that Dana White is paying Hasbullah more than many fighters for a five-year contract. But it should be noted that Dana White, the UFC, and Hasbullah himself have remained conspicuously silent on the matter. Obviously, this could be a real news story, and Lazarin might have gotten a big scoop here. What a scoop! But the more I think about it, the less and less likely it seems that the deal is real. At least not at the amount of money and the time being talked about. Five years, more than many fighters, sounds a bit crazy. Hear me out. <laughs> While Dana White famously connected with Hasbulla at UFC 267 back in October 2021, it seemed more like a reach for a dream event than the meeting of future business partners. Though whose dream was being fulfilled is up for debate. <laughs> Just look at how happy Dana is. <laughs> anyway, overall it was probably a good night for Hasbulla, but it probably didn't help his cause that he also got into a brawl ringside with Abdurazik. This is obviously on brand for Hasbullah. He's an agent of mischief and chaos after all. But is it something the UFC wants or needs? Yes. Yes, it is. The social media savvy UFC is always looking for ways to put their fights in front of new audiences, and Dana White and his league aren't afraid of headline grabbing antics and controversy. For example, he has a close relationship with the controversial podcasters, pranksters, influencers turned MMA news channel Nalk Boys, recently giving one of its members $250,000 in cash for his birthday. <laughs> holy sh oh, holy fuck. <laughs> back to back to Tootsies? This gift raised some eyebrows among fighters and their advocates, some of whom have at this point for years called out the league for what they allege to be the UFC's relatively limited fighter pay. Dana, on the other hand, seems to feel these claims are totally yeah. unfounded. Let me set this record straight. Oh. First of all, all these people on the internet go f yourself. Okay? I spend my money. How the f I want to spend my money? Mind your own f***ing business, number one. Number two, um, you know, if you look at what Kyle and the Nelk Boys have done as far as Howlerhead and a lot of other things that they've done, those kids have never asked me for anything ever. Never asked me for anything. And, and they, they couldn't be better people. Kyle has done so many things for me. And believe me, the $250,000 that I gave him for, for his birthday does not cover the amount of things that that kid has done for me. But Dan is definitely a smart dude. He's run the numbers and he'll probably want to avoid drawing attention to this particular controversy as much as possible. And even in a media world dominated by celebrities and social media stars, many of whom do bring undoubted benefits to the brands they represent, I think it's a fair question to ask why you are paying yet another influencer, one who has only recently exploded onto the scene, more than some of the people actually throwing and taking punches. Even though he's enormously popular, I mean, I can't stop talking about the guy, I just don't think Hasbulla is the kind of established and proven sustainable brand the UFC might want or need. <laughs> <laughs> now Hasbro probably has many many mega fans that will never get bored of him and let's do this <laughs> okay, so that guy was a Star Wars fan, but I'm sure there are at least a few people out there who love Hasbro just as much. But I'm unconvinced that your average person, you know, once the novelty wears off, will remain entertained by the 10th, 11th, 12th, 100th celebrity sucker punch. And, okay, I'm just gonna come out and say it, there's also the dwarfism. Is the UFC ready and willing to wade into an enormously complex debate about, you know, disabilities, human rights, rights of the individual, exploitation, human dignity? Now, you could argue they've already done that. This is a league that features consenting adults, men and women, beating the shit out of one another for money, after all. But fighting's their core business. 
dwarf pranks and stunts or not. And fun fact, there are actual laws in the US prohibiting things like dwarf tossing. So depending on the antics that Hasbro gets up to, the UFC could hilariously kind of be opening itself to legal liability. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a little taste of some of the arguments floating around dwarf and little people related entertainment as it pertains to dwarf tossing. Several little people made it clear to state senators, events that mock those with dwarfism put their entire community at risk. Fear, despise, and hate to my very being as a human. Making it seem like they're toys or pets that can be played with, or in 12-year-old Aiden Harris's case, bullied. Things that seem like just fun to average people can be very hurtful to little people. But one person who testified against the bill, a lawyer representing promoters of little people wrestling tournaments. Exploitation could be subjective. What is one person's exploitation is another person's willing and consent. But following the hearing, the little people who came to the Capitol said it doesn't matter if those involved in the events are willing participants. The will of an individual should never outweigh the collective will of a larger group. Drew Mickelson, King 5 News. Anyway, to summarize, all the evidence for the existence of the deal comes from a single post. No one involved has confirmed it. Then there's the fact that Hasbro's brand is too new, I feel, and I don't believe the UFC wants or needs the press he brings. And of course, the amount of money just seems unbelievable. We'll probably find out if I'm right or wrong very soon, possibly as early as October 22nd when UFC 280 takes place in Abu Dhabi. Deal or no deal, Hezbollah will likely be in attendance as his pal and countryman Islam Makachev squares off against Charles Oliveira for the lightweight championship. Now over to you, I'd love to know what you think. Is the deal real? Is Hezbollah's brand sustainable or will the world soon grow tired of him? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and please hit the like button, subscribe and check out one or two of my other videos. Come on. Come on.